Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on looking at what is cloud formation. So cloud formation is basically a service that's going to help you model and set up your entire AWS infrastructure and resources and allow you more time to manage those resources rather than concentrating on setting those up. So basically how does that actually happen? Well it's actually a fairly simple process in terms of you code your infrastructure from scratch. So we're going to use either a JSON type file or a YAML type file. So both of them are acceptable depending on which one you're more comfortable with, which one you have more expertise in. So we're going to code everything in those files in terms of all of the resources that you want to launch. So for example, if you want to create five EC2 instances or you want to create security groups or what security groups you want to attach to those EC2 instances. So basically everything that you can do within the AWS console in terms of setting up those resources can be coded into those JSON or YAML files. So after we have those files created, what we're going to do is we're going to upload those files into an S3 bucket or directly upload them into the CloudFormation designer when we go when you're designing the CloudFormation. So it depends on if you already have CloudFormation templates saved in S3 buckets, we can reference those in there or directly upload them. And then we're going and then you can use the CloudFormation browser console or through the CLI or even APIs to create a stack based on the template code. And we'll reference and I'll go through what is the stack and what is a template in good amount of detail throughout the rest of this course. And then finally, CloudFormation is going to provision those resources based on that file that you created. So that's essentially what the cloud formation process is. You're basically provisioning your entire infrastructure or part of your in infrastructure on AWS through a coded format. So there's lots of benefits of using cloud formation rather than doing it manually. First, it greatly simplifies the infrastructure management. So for scalable, for example, for scalable web applications, you can include a backend database. You might also use an auto scaling group or a load balancer or a relational database. So all of that is normally provisioned if you start up a web service. So usually you would have to individually provision these resources. You have to individually go in and set up an auto scaling group or a load balancing and additionally a database. And after you create the resources, you have to configure them to work together. And all of these tasks add a great amount of complexity and time in getting that resource or that web server set up. So instead of doing all of that, the cloud formation, like I just mentioned, you can basically set up a template, create it, modify it, and that template will describe all of those resources. And one of the good things about CloudFormation is, let's say if something changes one month, one month or one week or a few months down the road in terms of how your infrastructure is set up, you can go ahead and modify that initial stack that you created in CloudFormation to accommodate that new change, whether it's a new security group, whether it's a new resource, whether it's a new uh, relational database, whatever that is, you can go ahead and modify an existing template rather than create a new one from scratch. Additionally, it allows you to quickly replicate your infrastructure. So for example, if your application requires additional availability, you might replicate it in multiple regions. So if a region becomes unavailable, your users are not affected. Now the challenge in doing that or in replicating the application, it basically also requires to replicate the resources. And not only do you need to record all of the resources that your application requires, you might also provision and configure those resources in each region. So all of that is automated and simplified through CloudFormation, through the reuse of templates. And then finally, you can easily control and track changes to your infrastructure. So for example, you might change to a higher performing instance type in your auto scaling launch configuration so that you can reduce the maximum number of instances, for example. So if problems occur after you complete the update, you might need to roll back your infrastructure to the original settings. Now, to do this manually, you not only have to remember which resources were changed, you also have to know what the original settings were. Now, when you provision through CloudFormation, the template describes exactly what resources are provisioned and their settings. Now, because they're text files, you all you have to do is basically 
track the differences in your templates to track the changes to your infrastructure. And when we're actually going through the labs, you guys will notice when instances or when resources are provisioned through CloudFormation templates, it basically tags them with the specific template code and the template name. So you know specifically what was launched through what CloudFormation templates. And one of the best things about CloudFormation templates is, let's say if you've launched a CloudFormation template that provisioned 10 EC2 instances. Now when you delete that stack in CloudFormation, all of the resources that are linked to that stack are also deleted. So if you delete that stack, all 10 resources will also be deleted. Now that's that's kind of a double-edged sword in my opinion, because if you delete the stack, all the resources are deleted, but there's lots of benefits, and I think the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks of doing that. So now I've been referencing templates and talking about JSON and YAML files. So in CloudFormation, like I mentioned, a template can either be a JSON or a YAML formatted text file. And again, these will have the extensions of a, either a .json, .yaml, .template, or even a .txt file. And CloudFormation is going to use these templates as a blueprint in which you can define a EC2 instance, uh, AMI ID, you can define key pair names, you can define auto scaling groups, basically anything within the AWS resources. And in the screen you guys see an example of a JSON file and a corresponding YAML file. So basically in these basic templates that you guys see as an example, what CloudFormation is going to do is going to provision an instance with that specific AMI ID and the instance type it's going to provision is a T2 micro, which is the smallest EC2 instance and is also part of the free tier. It also references the key pair, the key name, which is calling test key and an EBS volume. So for example, if you wanted to provision an EC2 instance through CloudFormation, all you would do is save this text file or save this JSON file on your local PC or in an S3 bucket, go into CloudFormation, upload it, and voila, you will have an EC2, a T2 micro EC2 instance with that specific image ID created within your AWS infrastructure. Now this is again a basic JSON, a basic template. You can It can get quite complex uh, in terms of provisioning multiple resources and we'll go through that throughout the rest of this course to get you guys more comfortable with these templates and what different resources can be provisioned with them. So a couple of other things to keep in mind in terms of cloud formation and I already discussed templates with you guys, but then there's all but then there's also something called stacks. Now when you use CloudFormation, you can manage re related resources as a single unit, which is what is referenced as a stack. You can basically create, update, and delete a collection of resources by creating, updating, and deleting the corresponding stacks. So all the resources in a stack are going to be defined by the stacks CloudFormation template. So for example, let's say let's suppose you create a template that includes a elastic load balancer creates an auto scaling group and a rds now to create those resources you would create a stack by submitting the template that you created and the cloud formation is going to provision all of those resources for you and you can work with stacks by using the console by using the api or even the command line interface and we'll be working quite in depth with stacks throughout the rest of this course. And then finally, there's also something called chain sets. Now, if you need to make changes to the running resources in a stack, you can update the stack. So it does not necessarily mean you have to delete the stack and create a new one. So let's say if you have five EC2, runs, EC2 instances running through a stack you created, and you want to upgrade them from a T2 micro to a higher infrastructure. You can do that through change sets. So I hope you guys got a good overview about what is CloudFormation, how it works. So again, the process in terms of how it works is fairly simple, but the complications or 
a bit of a complication comes in when you're actually doing that in terms of creating the text files or creating the JSON files. But the underlying process is fairly simple that you guys just saw.